Matthew chapter 6. Again, we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount. We're looking at what the martyrdoms. This is what they love about the Bible. Now, with this chapter, we're going to read and try to do every single verse. And we're going to see where the world is wrong and where God is right. You can't just nitpick in the Bible. Take heed that ye do not your alms, giving before men, to be seen of them. So you're doing something just so men can see you. You get the praise and oh, look what he did. See what he did? Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So an open work for the place for the pleasing of man, God's not going to reward you. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. Da -da -da -da, look what I'm going to give. And there are churches that have the dollar dance. And I was in one of them. You know, they get in line, the $1 line, the $5 line, and you go all the way up to no one's giving any more. $100. And it's just a big show. As the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets that they might have glory of men. Then I say unto you, they have their reward. You just see what Jesus has told you in history. 31 AD, there are people outside the synagogue blowing Trump and saying, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm giving. Telephone. And they're not going to get no reward from heaven. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand's doing. And that's in, that's literally it's impossible. It's your body. But what Jesus is saying, listen, don't even make a record of it. Right hand writes things down. Don't even write it down. Don't claim it under ten forty. You know, you'll get your reward. You'll get money back. And you lost it. That's what I say. You don't have to believe that, but that thine eyes may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. There you go. Don't do it for a show. And what we're going to see in this chapter is don't do it for a show. Do it for God, not for people. If you're going to memorize scripture, do it for the Lord. If you're going to give, do it for the Lord. If you're going to pray, do it for the Lord. And when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen them. Boy, these, guys, these characters are really, they're out there just showing themselves. Look, I'm giving money. All right, everyone, I'm going to pray now. That they may be seen of men. They do it for men to see them, not God. But I say unto you, they have their reward of man not God you imagine going to the judgment seat of Christ thinking you're going to get crowns thinking you're going to get rewards and you show up empty well Lord well, you didn't do it for me you did it for the praise of man but well, Lord didn't I go out evangelism you went because the pastor made you go you went because if, if you're the only one that wouldn't go you went because your girlfriend went. You went because you know they were your friends. You didn't go for me. You didn't do it for me. So you lost your rewards. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Have a prayer closet. Have somewhere alone. Get off alone. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. Oh, we can't pray to start the football game. We can't pray in the cafeteria of our meal. We can't pray to do it. They took pray. You can pray. God told you you can pray. Do it in secret. No, you don't have to make a show in the cafeteria. Okay, everybody, look at me bow my head. No, you can just sit there, hold your sandwich in your hand, and just to yourself, the Lord just actually blesses me for your honor and glory. Thank you. How's that? 
You're not going to upset anybody doing that, and you're going to please God. But you try to make it open soul, you know, we're going to have to see everybody pray. It's just a lost cause fight. Now, we're going to step away for a minute. Because in the other Gospels, the disciples come up and say, Jesus, teach us to pray. After speaking about prayer, be not ye therefore like unto them, the ones that openly alms, openly prayer for men to see him. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask them. Now it's funny because James will come up later on and say, you ask not, you receive not. Is that a contradiction? Absolutely not. We're going to see later on at the end of this chapter. We're not talking to Gentiles in the church age. We're talking to Jews in the kingdom of heaven with their king sitting there right then and there right now. Jesus has not died. He has not been buried. He is surely not risen from the grave. This is not the New Testament. Testament has to be someone who has died. See, that's where we get. The New Testament starts with Matthew. No, it doesn't. It starts with the last few chapters of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Testament begins when Jesus dies. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Now, this is not a prayer that you do beads. You memorize. This is an example prayer. This is not the Lord's Prayer. With other scripture, this is the disciples' prayer. He's speaking to his disciples after they ask the question. Our Father which is which are in heaven. Address God the Father, not Mary. Imagine a Catholic reading, Our Father aren't in heaven, and, uh, oh man, I can't remember how they used to do it. Mary, hell Mary, I couldn't remember that. Mary's not the Father. You got the sexes all mixed up. When you pray, open up to God the Father. Hallowed be thy name. Well, there's only one name that's hallowed. Acts 4.22 or 4.12. The Lord Jesus Christ. Open up God and Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come. It's not our prayer. I don't care about a kingdom. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for the rapture. Even if I die today or die tomorrow, die next year, die, and the Lord, I am waiting for the rapture, not a kingdom. So right there, that tells you, non-Gentile. And we'll see that later again. Thy will be done in earth. It's going to be done. The church will be called out. There will be seven years called Jacob's trouble. Satan will be as it is in heaven. Satan will be cast out of heaven one day. That will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Revelation 12, 6, Luke 1, 3. Day by day. Why? Because there are people who are going to start following Jesus Christ and they're going to lose their job. They're going to lose their family. They're going to lose help from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And we're to live day by day. In the tribulation period, you're going to have to receive the mark to get bread. Or certain nations are going to help these Jews. Kingdom. Kingdom comes at the second advent of Jesus Christ. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. That's works. Oh Lord, I, I've, I've forgiven this guy who owes me five bucks. And you know, forgive me all the thousands of dollars that I owe. Is that going to be answered? You know, according to Nehemiah, you know, some of the people that were, they were being owed to were the Jewish brethren. And lead us not into temptation. That's a good prayer. James says that. But deliver us from evil. Help us to get out of evil. Help us to get out of sin. For thine is the kingdom, again, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It's an outline of a prayer. It's not a Gentile prayer. It's not a church age prayer. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, people have crossed the line. That's what trespass means. When you see a sign that says no trespassing, don't come. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. That's a general. That could be true in the church age. If you forgive others, God will forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's general. You show mercy, God will give you mercy. Moreover, when you fast, see, we took a little side note. We talked about alms, we talked about prayer, now we're talking about fasting. Be not as the hypocrites. Hmm. Here we go again. Of a sad countenance. Oh, oh, look at me. What's wrong with you? I'm fasting. Oh, I haven't had any food for 15 minutes. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. For they disfigure their faces. <laughs> How's that for painting your face? They make their faces look, oh, I've been fasting more than I have. Man, they're sounding a trumpet. They're going, hey, look at me, I'm going to pray. They look at my face. That they may appear unto men. To, they may appear? You mean there's a possibility that they are not fasting? <laughs> they're only pretending. The script says we're, we're fasting, but we're not. For very I say unto you, they have their reward of men. No time you tell they have their reward. They have their reward of man, not God. That uh oh, verse 17. But thou when thou fastest, okay, so Jesus said, Go ahead and fast. Anoint thy head with oil, like you would do every day. Wash thy face, clean yourself up. That thou appear not unto men to fast. I mean, people go, hey, you look cheerful and happy today. And inside your stomach is growling. But unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father which sees thee in secret shall reward thee openly. That's what you want. You want God to give you the reward, not man. Once you get man's rewards, once the heaven and earth pass away, that's it. That reward is gone. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through to steal. That's where Jesus keeps saying, very they say unto you, they have their reward. Their rewards will corrupt, their rewards will be eaten by moth, their rewards will be can be stolen by men. Or lost, or decay, or fall apart, or but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven whether neither moth so there's no moths in heaven see that nor rust there's no rusting in heaven does corrupt where thieves there are no thieves in heaven do not break through nor to steal so like that there's three things that jesus has told you is not in heaven there's no moths there's no rust and there's no thieves How's that? Romans 14, 10. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Poor writing. What is that? 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and something, 9, 27. Hebrew? Hebrews 9, 27, possibility. Wow, I can't read my own writing. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where will your treasure is? Is it upon the earth or is it heavenly? Jesus said you can't have both. Your heart is either fixed on earth or your heart is fixed on heaven. Neither both. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. Single. Set upon God. Seeking to please God. Seeking to do the will of God. Seeking the word of God. Doing what you're supposed to be doing. But if thy eye be evil. 
thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So either the world is going to be dark, John chapter 3, or the Lord will make you light, John chapter 3, John chapter 1. You can't have light and darkness. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is world, treasures of the world, anything of the world, anything of Satan or God. Chapter 12, verse 30, Deuteronomy 5, 9. You've got to decide today, is it God or is it anything else? Because it can't be both. And a lukewarm Christian, we are told, makes God sick. God told you, be cold. Go ahead. Do the mammon. That's what you want. Go ahead. You're saved. I'd rather you be hot and choose me, God, and be hot, set your heart upon the heavenly, but stop walking down the middle road between mammon and between God and between earth and between heaven. You know when you're, when you're in the middle ground of heaven and earth, you're in outer space. There's no air. You're dead. It's not where man's supposed to be. And if you're in outer space between heaven and earth, you are where Satan is in principalities and powers. In high places. Heaven is hot. On fire. The earth is cold. Therefore, I say unto you, who? Let's get to who. Let's get to you. Take no thought for your life. Care about your life. What is your life? But a vapor. What ye shall eat. Well, that's a big comment from the law because there are certain things that you can't eat. And being deprived of food. What ye shall drink. Being deprived. Nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on. Your clothes. Is not the life more than meat? If you starve. And starve to death. That's not the end of life. You got an eternal soul that is going somewhere one day. It's either heaven or hell. You can feed your, yourself fat with food and just fatten yourself up for the rotisserie in hell. The rich man went into hell. Lazarus the beggar went into Abraham's bosom. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap. Nor gather the barns. You ever see a, a bird out there working a tractor? Running a lawnmower? Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Oh, get that to Peter. Jesus Christ, God of the, of the modernistic verses of the Bible that they love, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said human beings are more to God than birds. God values humans more than animals. Oh, that's a hit. See, we don't read all the Bible, do we? We just pick out what we want. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? Make yourself taller. He already said one earlier, well, it can make your hair black or white. And why take ye thoughts for raiment, your clothes? Who cares about your clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. I don't know how they grow. They toil not, okay, they don't work, neither do they spin. They don't make, they don't have a sheep come by and grab the wool and make thread. They don't sew. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon, oh, look at Jesus. Jesus said Solomon was a real guy. Look at that. 
Jesus just backed up the Old Testament, the third king of Israel, Solomon. In all his glory, well, he had a great glory, was not a reign like one of these. <laughs> Jesus has told you Solomon wasn't as beautiful as the uh, lilies. <laughs> the lilies were beautiful than Solomon was. How's that? Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, ooh, God gives clothing to the grass. Green. I don't know if I ever want to see naked grass, but what today is, today is green. And tomorrow is cast into the oven. They would burn the grass for fuel. Shall not much shall he not much more clothe you? O little of faith. Therefore take no thought saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now how do you know that this is not church age doctrine? One thing coming up next verse. Well, what about the life of Paul? You ever read what Paul said about the pearls of his life? There were times he, he without fasting, he hungered. There were times that he was naked, without clothes. There were times he had no water. What's the problem? Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is not for the church age. Paul's life proved it. Now watch what he says. For after all these things do the Gentiles see. Now who would he be comparing against the Gentiles? The Jews. He just told you in chapter 6, verse 32, I am not talking to the heathen. I'm talking to the Jewish people. 5, 6, and 7 are for Jewish people. Now you can apply parts of this to the church age. You can spiritually apply it to you. But doctrinally, it is to Jews. There are wonderful things in here. We don't make a big show of our lives. That's wrong. But if he's talking to the Jews and they're under the law, making a big show of their works to boast about what they're doing, that doesn't get them into heaven. Today, works don't get you. If, if I give, if I pray, if I fast, that's not going to get me into heaven. That's what the Jews are relying on right now, present day, as Jesus is speaking to them. There are people who are boasting of what they're doing. And they're not doing it for God. That's the big overfill what Jesus is saying. You think you're righteous. You're self-righteous. And that don't count. In the eyes of God, your self-righteousness does not count. You get no credit. Now watch, for your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things, food, raiment, drink. Ready? Number two, or actually number three, Paul's example, the Gentiles seek. Number three, but seek ye the first, the kingdom of God. That's not church. Kingdom of God, that's the spiritual kingdom. That is where God is. That is where the heaviness, that's where the holiness is. That's where the cherubim are. That's the realm of God, the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not here. It's there through Jesus Christ, but they're going to put him on the cross pretty soon. In two and a half years. Nowhere is a Christian told to seek the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek ye the first the kingdom. That's works. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now look at it. If you seek God as a Jew. You don't need to have anxiety about food, drink, and clothing. If you seek God and do what you're supposed to do. Works. 
God will take care of you. Now, if anybody's ever read Fox's Book of Mars about the church age saints, are you going to deny that they never sought God and, and, and sought to please God and everything that did and ended up naked, burning on faggots, uh, being thrown into the river, being uh, killed, and all the torture devices, all the killings that Christians have sought in their life, being in jail, icy cold and naked and not having food and food they had had more bugs in it than they were outside and all that. You're trying to say they weren't seeking God. <laughs> no. Two different dispensations. We live under, yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Why? Because Jesus lived godly and he suffered persecution. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Or I would want to say, take no thought for the morrow. I don't know why we add the two to it. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. If it comes, it comes. If it don't, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Be content with what you got right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. That's what he's dressing the people. And we'll continue more with the Sermon on the Mount next lord willing next chapter we'll find a verse that everybody will quote at you and it's funny because most people that would quote you at uh, gentiles <laughs> they don't rightly divide 